So I wrote this blog post a couple months ago about how to secure your Bitcoin wallet, and it was really just intended to be sort of a general introduction to some best practices, although it, it's received and continues to receive quite a bit of traffic. Now some people have asked me if I could go into more detail about how to create a secure cold storage wallet. And doing so is kind of outside the scope of what I could do in a blog post, so I decided to make a little video tutorial for you guys. Now, as I mentioned in this post, the most secure way to create a cold storage wallet is to use a second computer. If you have a second computer that you're committed to keeping offline permanently, never reconnected to the internet, you could just generate your, your keys on that computer and then send your bitcoins over to those addresses. And as long as you never reconnect that computer to the internet, it should be impossible for an attacker to steal your bitcoins. Unfortunately, if you're like most people, you don't have access to a second computer that you can keep offline. So this tutorial is for you. I'm going to show you how to use your home computer to se securely create a cold storage wallet. Now I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this in Windows, but you could just as easily do this in OS X or Ubuntu. The steps are pretty much going to be exactly the same. Now what you need to keep in mind is we need to assume that your computer is compromised, right? Especially if you're using Windows which is just riddled with malware. You wouldn't want to create a new Bitcoin wallet on a compromised computer. Doing so would just unnecessarily put your Bitcoins at risk. So what we're going to do is we're going to boot into a temporary operating system that we're going to use to isolate our work environment from any malware that might already exist on this computer. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, to start, you're going to have to get yourself two USB flash drives, at least two. If you want to keep more backups of your keys, you might want to get a couple more. And we're going to install a Linux Live system, an operating system, on one of those flash drives, right? So it's not going to install on your computer's hard drive. We're going to install it on a flash drive, and we're going to boot into that operating system directly from the flash drive. So first thing we need to do is download the operating system and the operating system we're going to use for this purpose is Tails. Okay, Tails is a Linux live system. It stands for the Amnesiac Incognito Live System. Here's the URL here where you could just Google it. The reason why I recommend Tails as opposed to any of the other Linux distributions is because Tails is specifically configured to prevent security leaks. Right, So we're not going to be using the internet when we're in Tails, but uh, if you do, all of your internet traffic is encrypted and routed through Tor. Um, Tails, it doesn't use your computer's hard drive at all. So the entire operating system loads entirely in the memory. And what that means is if you get any malware uh, while you're using Tails, or if there are any records of the, the keys that you generated while you're in there, when you restart your computer, the entire memory gets wiped, and there's no record of you ever using Tails at all. Okay, so this will completely protect you from any malware that you might already have on your computer. So to download Tails, we're just going to click this link over here, and then we are going to download the ISO file. Now, if you know how to use PGP, you probably want to download the signature as well and the Tails signing key. Uh, so you can verify the integrity of this this ISO image. Now, if you don't know what PGP is, you know it's a, it's a probably a good idea to Google it. Although uh, a PGP tutorial is outside the scope of what we're doing here, um, you don't have to check the signature on the ISO file, but it is it is best practice to do so, uh, just to make sure you're not getting a a copy that somebody tampered with. Okay, um, I'm going to actually cancel this download. This, this download is going to take a while, and I already have a copy of it here on my hard drive. Next thing we have to download is something called Unibootin. Okay, you can just Google that as well. Uh, we're going to use Unibootin to mount the ISO file that we just downloaded to our flash drive. Okay, so I'm just going to pick your operating system and download it. Okay. 
Okay, and there it is. So these are the two things that we're going to need to load uh, our operating system onto this flash drive. Now, before we do that, we are going to want to format our flash drive. So you're going to come over here, just pick your drive, right click, hit format. Most flash drives, I believe, come formatted as NTFS. You're going to want to select FAT32. Uh, I think if you do this while it's installed as NTFS, I think it's it's going to give you an error when you try and boot into Tails later. So you have to format it as FAT32. Uh, and then just hit start. Now this is going to completely wipe the flash drive. So if you had anything important on there, you might want to move it onto your hard drive. At this point, you can always move it back on later. Hit OK. OK, and formatting complete. Close this out. Now we're going to open Unibootin. Okay, there it is. And you're just going to check this disk image, and we're just going to select our ISO file that we downloaded. This is our Tails operating system. And then you would just select USB drive and pick your drive. Mine is the G drive, so everything is fine. I'm just going to hit OK. And there it goes. So it's installing on the flash drive right now. <clears throat> I'm just going to let that go. Now, the final thing that we need is we're going to need some way of generating the new Bitcoin addresses once we are in Tails. Now, in theory, you could use any uh, Linux version of Bitcoin wallet. Um, but probably the easiest way to do this is to just download a JavaScript file and run it in the browser. So we're going to come over here to bitaddress.org. Okay, now uh, the thing to keep in mind, you don't, if you're ever using a, a a browser to generate Bitcoin addresses, you don't just want to generate the addresses in the browser, right? That's a really insecure way of going about doing it. Instead, we're going to uh, download the source code for this web page. We're going to come over here to this link down here for the GitHub repository. We're going to click this download zip file. Okay, and I'm just going to extract this right here. Now, the only file you need out of this group is this one right here, the bidaddress.org HTML file. So at this point, I don't have a second flash drive to demonstrate with, uh, but if you have your second flash drive handy, stick that flash drive into your computer and just drag and drop this this file into your flash drive. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna, when we get back into Tails, we're gonna load this in a browser and use it to generate our Bitcoin address. Now. Let's see, is Unibootin done? No, not yet. Okay, now just like with the uh, Tails ISO file, you can also check the signature. Uh, if you have PGP, you can check the signature on, on the bit address HTML file. You, you have his PGP key here, and there's also this version history. Uh, the version history is signed, so you could check the signature on this, and then the way that you actually would check the uh, signature on the HTML file that you download is you would hash it with SHA-1 and just check it uh, compared to the hash right here. Okay, how are we coming along here? Almost. Okay, that's it. So now we have the Tails operating system installed on our flash drive, on one flash drive. On the second flash drive, you should have this bitaddress.org HTML file, which we downloaded. And what we're going to do now is we are going to boot into Tails. Now, I'm not going to be able to uh, keep recording while my computer restarts, so 
Uh, I'm going to have to restart the recording once we're in Tails. Um, but before we do that, at this point you should probably go turn off your router. If you're using uh, Wi-Fi, just go turn your router off. If you have a computer plugged into to the internet, just unplug the cable. Uh, we're not going to need the internet at this point, and you don't want to be connected to the internet when we go into Tails anyway. Um, we're just going to generate the new addresses completely offline. Now, you're just going to restart your computer like normal, and you're going to insert the Tails flash drive that we just created, the flash drive that has Tails installed on it. And the very first screen when your computer restarts, it's it, it's that you know, weird looking screen, mine shows uh, like a Dell logo or something like that. Um, it'll say F2 for setup and F12 for boot options. So just keep tapping F12. Just keep tapping it until a little menu comes up and it'll ask you what do you want to boot from. Do you want to boot from a DVD, a USB drive? Select boot from USB and Tails will do the rest. It'll, it'll boot entirely into that operating system. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to pause the recording, and I will see you back in Tails. Okay, so welcome back. Here we are in Tails. Now we're going to go ahead and generate our Bitcoin addresses while we're in here. So we're going to click on Computer, and then you should have your USB stick with the bit address file on it. Just click on that and then here's the file you can just go ahead and double click this and it should open an ice weasel browser okay and there you go alright so we're gonna click on paper wallet okay and this will generate the paper wallets right here in the browser you can see you got the uh, Bitcoin address on the left hand side and the private key on the right. Now, um, the only thing about the way this is formatted right here is that the private key is just sitting on the paper wallet in plain text, right? Uh, so if uh, someone were to discover your stash of paper wallets, uh, they could easily just steal your Bitcoin. So instead, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to print these out uh, using a, a BIP38 encrypted private key. All right, so we're going to check off BIP38 encrypt, and then we're going to select a passphrase. Now, you want this passphrase to be very, very long and random, um, so that it's it's difficult to brute force. Right, if you're using normal letters, it's and characters, maybe 14, 15 different characters. I'm just going to go with a a default password here just to demonstrate. Now, how many uh, paper wallets do you want to print out? I, I would suggest you probably shouldn't just print out one. And the reason for that is you don't want to send all of your bitcoins to a single address. Because let, let's just say you own 100 bitcoins, right? That's over $100,000. If you, let's say you just wanted to spend one bitcoin, well, just to spend that one bitcoin, you have to remove the entire amount from cold storage and import it into a hot wallet, putting your, your funds at risk uh, just to spend that one Bitcoin. So uh, a better way of going about doing it would be to maybe generate uh, 10 Bitcoin addresses and split up your funds between them, maybe 20, right? Maybe you want to do five Bitcoins on each address. Uh, it's really up to you, but um, it's it would be much better to do that than to uh, put them all in a single paper wallet. Okay, so then you, you're just going to want to go and click on Generate. And then it's going to perform a number of tests to uh, encrypt the keys. Okay, and there you go, and you'll see that the paper wallets turned blue. Um, this is because they're they're now encrypted, right? And you'll see that the 
uh, private key over here on the right hand side um, it now begins with the number six right so any any private key that begins with a six is an encrypted private key um, if you were going to import this this private key or Im import your cold storage addresses back into a wallet most wallets will allow you to import a bip38 private key uh, when you just copy and paste the key into the wallet it'll prompt you for your password so whatever uh, passphrase you entered uh, you would just enter it at that point um, now I say most wallets support the BIP38 uh, I, it's probably not all of them at this point but BIP38 it stands for Bitcoin Improvement Proposal this is sort of a a standard that has been developed so I expect if if all wallets don't support it right now at some point in the future they will alright so we're just gonna click print here now because we are in tails you don't have the print any printer drivers installed or anything like that we're not gonna be able to print directly from tails so instead you're just gonna click print to file and this is gonna save it as a PDF okay and you're just going to save it in your USB stick and then when you click print it'll just save it alright so you can close this out and there you go there's the PDF file on your USB stick you open it up there you are okay so what we're going to do now is we are going to restart back into Windows and we're going to print out this uh, PDF file uh, but we're not going to reconnect to the internet just yet so your your router should be off right now um, when you restart into Windows just keep it off and we'll reconnect later on okay so to restart you're just gonna go click on this little icon in the top right over here and just hit reboot and I'll do that and I'll see you back okay, in so Windows. here we are back in our regular operating system notice we still haven't reconnected to the internet we're not going to do that just yet and the final thing we have to do is just print out the paper wallets that we created okay should be right there on our flash drive and there they are so you're just gonna click print now if you typically connect to your printer through your Wi-Fi uh, that is you use wireless printing uh, I'm going to recommend for this purpose that you connect to your printer with a USB cable rather than fiddling around with the Wi-Fi. And the reason for that is you don't want to connect to the internet and give an attacker the opportunity to snag this file. Okay, your private keys are encrypted, uh, so un unless they can get your password, they still shouldn't be able to spend your bitcoins, but you don't want to give them the opportunity to try to brute force your password. Okay, um, so just connect with a regular USB cable. Uh, after you print out this file you're going to want to store your paper wallets in some way that protects them from moisture or from getting wet so you might want to throw them in a plastic bag or maybe laminate them or whatever else you come up with. Okay. Now you're also going to want to copy your Bitcoin addresses down somewhere so you can copy them like this it's kind of a little awkward uh, or you could use the QR code and just throw those Bitcoin addresses in a file maybe store it on your desktop um, that way you have them handy when you go to send the bitcoins from your hot wallet to these paper wallets later on okay um, notice you're still going to have this PDF file on your USB drive and I'm gonna recommend keeping it there as a backup okay so if anything happens to the paper wallets that you print out you still have your flash drive as a backup and again you could use multiple flash drives here if you wanted more than one backup just copy this file to the to the other flash drives now if someone does access your flash drives they can open this file and they can at least know that you've got bitcoins on it uh, they won't be able to spend them because the keys are encrypted but if you wanted to make it so that they didn't even that there was no way to tell that this was a bitcoin related file you could just encrypt it right you could use AES you could encrypt it with your PGP key you could even use TrueCrypt to create a hidden volume on this flash drive and then just drag this file into the hidden volume and then no one would even know that there's anything on those flash drives at all uh, but that's up to you you can decide uh, what 
level of encryption you want to use. Uh, if you don't encrypt it, that's fine as well because your private keys are already encrypted. So again, that's that's up to you. Uh, the last thing you have to do here before reconnecting to the internet is obviously you're going to remove your flash drive. Okay and you're just going to restart one last time and that's just to wipe your compute wipe the memory of anything that might be saved in it and then when you get back into windows uh after it reboots then you can go ahead and reconnect to the internet now before you send your bitcoins uh to the paper wallets that you just generated go ahead and put the paper wallets in whatever place you're going to be storing them so if you're going to be storing them in a safe deposit box go put them in the safe deposit box first before sending the bitcoins to those addresses right you're not going to want to be driving down the street with tens of thousands of dollars worth of bitcoin on you okay uh so put the put the empty paper wallets in the safe deposit box first and then when you get back to your computer send the bitcoins to those addresses okay so that's it that's how to create a secure uh cold storage address on your home computer if you do it this way using uh, the tails operating system you can be reasonably sure uh that you've created it securely and and no one should be able to steal your bitcoins uh if you have any questions i'm going to put my email in the description feel free to shoot me an email thanks